Hello 1P and welcome to your next lesson on rational numbers. Um, we're talking about fractions today and more specifically we're talking about multiplying and dividing fractions. So at the end of this unit I hope you can say, or not the end of the unit but at the end of the lesson, I hope you can say I can multiply and divide fractions. Um, if you don't have a calculator with a fraction button, now is a good time to get one. Uh, you can trade me for one. I trade me your calculator that doesn't have a fraction button for one of mine that does, uh, if you need to. Uh, but it would be a good idea to go out and find a, a calculator that has a fraction button on it, a nice scientific calculator. So working with rational numbers, uh, we're going to have a quick look at what the fraction button on a calculator looks like. So your fraction button will look like this a, b slash c, uh, most likely, and to type in two-thirds into that you would type in two, then hit this button and then type in three. And what that looks like on your screen, and, and it's different for different calculators, sometimes it looks like a little r, it'll come up on the screen and look something like this, two r three. Sometimes it might look backwards, it might look two little l three, um, but something along those lines to show this this little jagged mark shows the slash in between the fractions. So that looks like that or sometimes like that uh, depending on the type of um, fraction button or type of calculator you have. Uh, now if you want to input a mixed number you have to hit that button twice. So this separates the whole number from the fraction the first time you hit it and the second time it um, it's this little button in here, or this little mark in here. So this on your screen would look like 5 R um, 2 R 3. Uh, so it looks like a little R but it's really just sort of a little jagged mark. Now where to find that button on your calculator? I've got three different kind of snapshots here depending on your calculator. Uh, there's one place that you might find it. Uh, over here there's another place that you might find it uh, and this one whoop, whoop, that's not on top um, this one is also a fraction button right there um, and it works just a little bit differently than the rest of them so you might need to talk to me about this if you have a calculator that that looks like this. It's a very good calculator but it's a little different than other people's. Okay so that's just telling you what the fraction button is. We're going to move on to doing stuff without the fraction button. Um, mixed versus improper fraction. An improper fraction has a bigger number on the top than on the bottom. That's the definition of an improper fraction and a mixed number has a whole number and a fractional part. So we're going to turn a mixed into an improper fraction today. So here's our mixed number. And I want you to think about what this mixed number actually means. Um, first of all, we're dividing things up into three parts. And what I have here is five whole things that I'm dividing up. Let's think of this as being pizza. I usually like to put um, put everything back to the pizza effect. Uh, we have five whole pizzas and then two-thirds of a sixth one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five whole pizzas and they're all split into three equal parts. So we'll just split them up into three equal parts. Kind of looks like the peace symbol here. So we've got five whole pizzas split into three equal parts and then we've got one more pizza that was split into three equal parts and then somebody ate a piece so that I only have two thirds left over. So what this is asking us when, when I want to change from a mixed number into an improper fraction is how many pieces do I have in of thirds? How many thirds do I have in total? Well of these five pizzas there are five pizzas all split into three parts. So in total we have 15 pieces. And then I've got two more over here. So all totaled I have 17 pieces. And since each of those pieces is a third of the pizza, because I split the pizza up, what I actually have is 17 thirds. Um, but you don't have to draw out these little pieces to figure that out, I want you to notice that this 5 times 3 is actually from that right there. It's the number of pieces each one is split into 
times the number of whole ones that we have. So we just need to do that five times three and then add in the two little pieces that we have up on top. So this would just be three times five plus two. So using that so that we don't draw this one out, we could do, uh, I know this is going to be quarters because that's what it's split into, four times three plus one is what's going to go on top, four times three plus one, which is going to be four times three is twelve plus one is thirteen quarters. So if I split pizzas into quarters and I had three whole ones and then one piece out of the fourth one, uh, what I actually have is 13 pieces of pizza and they're all a quarter of one whole pizza. Now going the other direction has to do with dividing improper to mixed. Now what I have here are pizzas that are split into five parts and I've got 18 pieces. So what we want to know is how many holes I have. Well, if I split this one into five pieces, uh, and that's not an easy thing to do, um, there would be, let's just say there's five pieces. And then I split this one into another five pieces, so that makes ten pieces total. And then I put this one into another five pieces, which would make this have uh, 15 pieces total. I still haven't gotten to my total 18 pieces. And then if I have another five pieces, well that's 20 pieces. Now I'm over. So how far over? I'm two pieces over. So I have to take two pieces out of here, meaning that there's three pieces left in that one. So this turns into three and then three fifths pieces. Okay. Now, uh, how do we do that without drawing them all out again? Well, think about how many times 5 goes into 18. And you can actually pull out your calculator and say, uh, how many times does 5 go into 18? So you do 18 divided by 5. 18 divided by 5 is 3.6. Now the 3 is the part you really need to worry about because the 3 tells you how many holes there are. And there's three holes, and three holes is actually 15. So since three holes is 15 to get to 18, I need three more pieces. So that's where that three-fifths comes in. Now let's do it with this one. Um, three goes into 12 how many times? Well, three goes into 12. 12 divided by three, if you want to find that out, you can punch that into your calculator, equals four. So this is actually equivalent to four and there's nothing left over. Let's do one more here. I don't have that on your sheet, but let's do um, nine quarters. How many times does four go into nine? Well, you can do that on the calculator if you're not real good at your times tables. You go nine divided by four and it tells us that two times, forget about this little last part, two times. So we know we have two holes. Well, what is two holes if they're split into four? Well, if I have two whole pizzas and they're each split into four, that means two times four, I have eight pieces. And then I, to get to nine, I need one fourth more. Okay. Now, multiplying rationals and dividing rationals. So we got a couple of steps here. Um, I'm going to Hold on a second. We're going to go through this step by step and when you multiply and divide the first thing you need to do is change any mixed number into an improper. So I got to change this one into an improper and is that what this step one says? Step one says change to an improper fraction. So I've got a mixed number I need to change it to improper. So we do 4 times 3 is 12 plus 1 is 13. So this is 13 quarters times two-fifths. This didn't change because it was it was improper already or well it's not improper uh, but it didn't it's not a mixed number anyway. Step two says multiply the numerators okay and we should have equal signs down here too. Multiply the numerators uh, 13 times 2 is 26. What's the next step say? The next step says multiply the denominators. So the denominators are 4 times 5, so I'm going to write that on the bottom is 20. Okay. 
Now this is actually an answer, um, but it's not in lowest terms. And I believe that's what step four says, reduce to lowest terms if possible. Well, I know this one isn't in lowest terms because um, two will go into both of those. Okay, so I know that two goes into both of these things. So I can divide 26 by two, which is 13 and I can divide 20 by 2 which is 10. Now if you do have a calculator that has fractions on it you could have it reduce this to lowest terms on its own. You could do 26 hit your little fraction button and 20 and when you hit equals it will change it to lowest terms. It'll come up 13 R 10 or however that little symbol is in between there. Could be could be this way as well. Uh, I'd rather, I want to see the steps so that I know you know how to multiply. Uh, however, as far as reducing to lowest terms, if you want to use your calculator for that, go right ahead. Now, dividing rationals. Let's take a look at the step here. Step one, change to an improper fraction. Exactly the same as multiplying rationals. So let's change this to an improper. It's actually the same one. 4 times 3 is 12 and then I add the 1 which gives me 13 and it's 13 quarters. Now what's step 2 say? Step 2 says flip over the divisor, the second fraction. So this second fraction, that's our divisor, I'm going to flip it over. 5 halves. Just make the bottom the top and the top the bottom. Uh, what's the next one say? Step 3 says multiply as normal. So now we're going to multiply. Notice that this division becomes a multiplication after you flip this over. And so we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply 13 times 5. 13 times 5 is 65. And then the bottom part is 4 times 2 is 8. Now this is a pretty big improper fraction. If you want, you can change it back into a mixed number. The last one just says reduce to lowest terms if possible. This won't reduce to lowest terms, but we can turn it back into a mixed number. How many times does 8 go into 65? Well, you can pull out your calculator and see that. Say 65 divided by 8. It goes 8 times. So I know I have 8 whole numbers. And then how many eights do I have left over? If you don't happen to know that, try it. Eight times eight. Eight times eight is 64. I had 65. With eight holes, I have 64, which means there must be one left over when I change it back into a mixed number. And that is it for this lesson.